It's another brown week of the Nigerian equities market. The overall index as at midday was down 0.39%. Let's cross over now to the exchanges. Temple is all set to bring us up to speed with developments there. Hello, Temple. Good afternoon. Well, we observed a tepid mood in the market earlier today. Does this have to do with the recent development in Nigeria's judiciary uh, system? Well, we can easily link it to that because this is the kind of information that any typical market globally will react to. Uh, the fact that we are seeing uncertainties uh, between the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary uh, really sends a kind of uh, relative signal to a lot of investors in the market. Uh, that's, so it's not new here. Uh, since uh, the market opened, we've been seeing this kind of calmness, uh, not so much of buying interest. If you compare what we are seeing right now in terms of volume and value to what we've had at this point, uh, at about this time last week Friday, that's the last session that we had uh, trading in this market, you see that it is really low. Uh, at this point in time, we've seen some 150 million units of shares traded so far, valued at some 1.17 billion naira. So uh, this is not uh, far-fetched. It's just like a lot of investors are waiting on the sideline. We've seen a lot of the foreign investors coming in lately, and that's how we're able to enjoy the kind of rally that the market saw last week. Uh, a lot of traders also benefited from that because a lot of them have bought the shares, shares at lower prices. And so when the foreign investors came in, uh, it was more capital appreciation for a lot of the stocks, which gave them room now to be able to take profit. So this morning, you will have expected a bit of uh, rebalancing of portfolio, uh, but that hasn't really, really uh, kind of taken place because a lot of uh, some traders, a few traders in early trades actually told me that it's hard to sell uh, because they don't know what will become of the, uh, in, of the investments now that we are hearing uh, this kind of, this form of uncertainty uh, from the political actors. And that they, what, what, what we were made to understand is that those orders actually came in from some of the international investors that came in last week. But if we look at some of the uh, companies that, are, that we saw a huge sell-off on in early trades, uh, the likes of Zenith Bank, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, Sterling Bank, Fidelity Bank, if we look at the numbers, the percentage losses that they've had now, they have actually moderated, which makes it difficult for us to say or to explain uh, what side of the market, the, uh, what side of the divide the market will eventually uh, close at today, uh, Chimeze. Uh, talking about um, Zenit, basically the stocks in the banking sector, so what it means is that that pressure we're seeing in that selling is majorly on the banking sector. Which other sector is getting the hit? Uh, well, it's basically the banking names right now, uh, and of course a few of the, uh, I think the consumer goods segment of the market is also uh, down right now. That is actually uh, marginally down, uh, and of course it's, we, can, we, we may not distance it from this reason that has just been explained a while ago, and of course the fact that uh, within the last, in the last uh, seven sessions of this market, the banking names had been driving the market much higher. And so it may also be a reason for some investors to quickly take profit before we see the exit of the offshore investors on account of uh, maybe some investors' apathy. Uh, so we've seen now more interest in the oil and gas, because if you look at the oil and gas segment of the market, that's the topmost gainer at this point, 1.28% as well, 1.28% uh, rise in indices. That's what we've seen on the oil and gas segment. And the key drivers there are Total, which has gained some 4.10%. If you look at how it's closed over the weekend, uh, last week, it ended some 10% uh, uh, week on week. But if you look at Oando as well, Oando this morning is also rising some 4.12%. So these are the, key, the two key stocks in the oil and gas segment of the market driving up the performance of the market right now. So uh, summarily, just to say, to answer your question directly, I think the investors are now, and traders are generally looking away from the uh, banking names where we've seen uh, more interest last week. And for this week, while we're seeing the uh, political uncertainties, uh, you know, impacting on the market, investors will continue to look elsewhere. However, we haven't really seen that much interest as we used to see on uh, each trading session. 
uh, in the markets today. So it signals the fact that investors are probably just uh, waiting to see what will happen tomorrow, Tuesday, when the uh, National Assembly will meet over the uh, Chief Justice's uh, suspension uh, from the, in the judiciary. Then we'll now be able to explain what will happen uh, more glaringly in the markets. Chimizu. All right. Thank you very much, um, Temple. And in Zimbabwe, shopkeepers are beginning to take stock after looters took advantage of protests following a hike in the price of fuel. There is a severe shortage of dollars, fuel, and medicines in the country, while inflation hit 42% in December, the highest in a decade. Everyday life has been getting harder in Zimbabwe. On January 12, President Mnangagwa announced a hike in the price of fuel. It was the final straw for some Zimbabweans, and violent protests broke out in Harare and Bulawayo, the country's second biggest city. James Mutero is a worried man. He is the manager of a choppy supermarket in Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. Choppies is a popular retail chain that has outlets in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Zambia and Kenya. Mutero, other shopkeepers and various business owners complain that looters have taken advantage of the demonstrations. They started looting uh, the groceries, uh, two points, computers, some meat from the butchery section and all other assortment of goods that we stock in our shop. Terror estimates that it will take about 500,000 US dollars to replenish their stolen inventory and carry out repairs on the premises. But that will be a Herculean task in a country where companies are struggling to import raw materials and equipment, forcing them to buy dollars on the black market. It's quite a, a huge loss because right now we are not trading, but we need to pay our salaries, we need to pay uh, CESA, we need to pay the council, we need to pay the suppliers themselves. We have got stock which was looted, but uh, in our agreement terms, they need to be paid. With inflation at its highest since 2008 and a shortage of cash in circulation eroding spending power, the fragile state of the economy is at the heart of the country's political troubles. The global oil market prices fell in early trade after U.S. energy firms added rigs for the first time this year in a sign that crude production there may rise further. And as China, the world's second largest oil user, reported additional signs of an economic slowdown. U.S. crude oil futures were at $53.43 per barrel, down 26 cents from their last settlement. International Brent crude oil futures were at $61.50 a barrel, down 14 cents or about 0.2 percent. Our high U.S. crude oil production, which rose to a record 11.9 million barrels per day late last year, has been weighing on oil markets. That's a wrap on the program for today. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimizi Obi. You're welcome.